Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Builder and in this video I will show you how to design basement wall. So basically basement wall is constructed in order to retain the earth and to prevent moisture from seeping into the building. The basement wall must resist the lateral earth pressure as well as the additional pressure due to other type of loading. The basement wall carry lateral earth pressure generally as the vertical slabs supported by floor framing at the basement level and upper floor level. We have got the value as 300 mm and effective depth as 228 mm. So with this preliminary sizing, we will provide the basement wall in E tabs. So let us go to the model. So we will provide basement wall throughout the periphery and we will design the reinforcement. So let us go to the define here in section properties. We will define wall sections, add new property. So basement wall property type will be as specified here. Rate of concrete M35, modeling type we will consider cell thin. I have already explained about cell thin membrane in one of the video you can find there. I will put that in the description also. Modifiers, membrane F11 and for the axial direction we will not consider any of this. For the bending in M11 that is the flexural modifiers. So it is 0 0.8 for the uncracked section. And for the shear, it is 0.4. Okay. And we'll provide thickness of 300 mm. Okay. So now let us model the basement wall. So for modeling, you can use this drop floor or wall. And here select basement wall and draw this using the joint. And while drawing the basement wall, we have to apply lateral earth pressure and that will be applied according to the local axis as it will be easier for defining the direction rather than using the global axis. So go to the uh, view and here set display option and check for the local axis of the cell assignment apply. So here you can see RGB so red means local axis 1, G green local axis 2 and B blue that is local axis 3. And the earth pressure is applied in this direction that is local axis 3. So make sure that the direction will be same for all the walls so it will be easier to apply the load. Or we can also directly model the basement wall using the quick draw option. And for that let me delete this. And go to the plan view. And select this quick draw plans and select basement wall and auto pyre yes so basically this pyre level allows to design the wall as an individual element or a core let me delete this one now we have to cross check the local axis. So here you can see the local axis is pointing away that the outward which is not true for us because we will be applying the load along axis 3. This is also okay but in case of this you have to use the sign convention that is negative for the value. So I will just rotate the local axis. So for this go to edit and in edit cell you can find reverse local axis 3. So it is okay and let me do this for this also edit and go to reverse local axis 3. So modeling of the basement wall is done. Now let us assign the load that is the earth pressure and surcharge. So for which I will define load patterns here earth pressure and that will be a date type shell weight multiplier will be 0. Add new load and similarly surcharge this will be a live type add. Let us select the wall sections and assign cell loads that is non-uniform and this is basically the earth pressure and for applying this the restriction that is zero negative values and we will replace the existing load if there is any and the direction will be local axis 3. Now we have to assign the load in this direction and it is a triangular load. 
So we'll use this equation that is P is equal to AX plus BY plus CZ plus D and we have to use this A, B, C, D that is we have to enter the value of this. As our load varies in Z direction only, so obviously the coefficient for X and Y will be 0 and the value of C will be required as it is dependent on the Z axis. The equation we have here is P is equal to AX plus BY plus CZ. So as the load varies in Z direction only, so these two terms will be 0 and the equation becomes CZ plus D. Now as the load varies in triangular way, so considering this as Z is equal to 0 and this is Z is equal to H. So at the base that is Z is equal to 0, P is nothing but KA gamma H. I have already explained that while calculating the load. So in this equation, if we substitute Z as 0, then P is equal to KA gamma H. And at Z is equal to H, that is P is equal to C into H plus D is KA gamma H. Because the value of P is KA gamma H, so D is equal to KA gamma H. Now, at this level, value of P is 0. So, 0 is equal to CH plus KA gamma H. Then, the value of C is nothing but minus KA gamma because H, H will be cancelled out. Now, we can directly substitute this value C and D. So, the value of D is KA into gamma into H. So, KA is 0 0.33, gamma for saturated is 19 and H is 4.05. 25.39 and value of C is minus Ka gamma so minus 0.33 into 19 6.27 so right click on the wall and in the load you can see that the earth pressure is being applied similarly we have to apply the surcharge load and surcharge load being a rectangular so we can just apply as a uniform load so go to cell loads and here uniform and it will be surcharge so basically surcharge load is equal to Ka into W into H as it was being applied as a whole but we have to distribute this as a line load of unit weight 1 meter so we will just use Ka into W so Ka 0.33 W as 20 6.6 .6, and direction will be local axis 3 apply close so in this way the load is applied in the basement wall now let us add that into the load combination Surcharge being a live load, so 1.5. Okay. Similarly, you can add for all of them. Okay. And for the load pattern, while defining the earthquake, we have to consider the seismic height from the top of the rigid basement wall. So previously we are considering from the base. Now it will be first floor. That is from this point. That is the story range for the seismic load pattern definition. And so will the base shear coefficient and building height exponent will change as the time period that we computed was for the structure from base. But for now, the story that we are considering will be from the top of the rigid basement wall. As you can find this in IS code as well as NBC. So this has to be changed accordingly. Now let us check for the fire levels. So go to view and here in the set display option, go to other assignments and here select levels then you can see that different fire levels has been assigned for the basement wall now in the design option go to share wall design viewer revised preferences go to viewer revised preferences here we'll have is456 rebar material it will be hysd 500 shear material also 500 gamma for steel 1.15 okay nothing to change here so we have three different types of design approach here. Okay, let me select. Go to design and here you will see the assigned fire section and we have simplified compression and tension design, uniform reinforcing and general reinforcing. So for now we'll consider the 
यूनिफॉर्म रिनफोर्सिंग एम थर्टी फाइव स्पेसिंग बार साइज लेटेस्ट प्रोवाइड सिक्सटीन एम एम बार स्पेसिंग एज वन फिफ्टी क्लियर कवर एज फिफ्टी एम एम नाउ लेटेस्ट रन द एनालिस so the analysis is complete now let us run the concrete shear wall design and here select a design combination so select all this if you have is code then you can select as that now run this so here you can see we get the reinforcement required right click on any of it and you will get the summary as we have value less than this so we do not have to design the boundary wall and hence this design will be sufficient now let us compute the reinforcement so for the calculation of the reinforcement i have prepared an excel sheet so here you can see length of wall depth of wall gross area which is multiple of this two and grade of concrete used grade of steel percentage of steel from e tabs and the area of steel required will basically be percentage of this and the gross area and that is the area, uh, area of reinforcement required as a whole so reinforcement per face that is divided by two of this value and this is computed for a whole length and will compute for meter and will compute the reinforcement required so length of wall so go to e tabs here you can see length that is 5000 mm and thickness 300 so length is 5000 thickness is 300 gross area will be 15 this is the multiple of this two value grade of concrete is 35 500 okay percentage of steel from e tabs so the required reinforcement ratio is 0.0025 and the reinforcement required is 3750 so 0.0025 area of steel required comes as 3750 per face that is divided by this two and area of steel required per meter so this is basically divided by the length of the wall and this comes as 375 mm square per meter size of the bar provided let us provide as 16 mm or 20 mm bar the spacing required is 830 so 10 12 mm bar will be sufficient spacing required 300 so let us provide 300 mm as the spacing so area of steel provided will be 753.98 mm square per meter so in this way the reinforcement is computed similarly for the horizontal bar you can directly compute from this that is rebar required 750 mm square per meter so this was for the gross area while this is for per meter so we can directly compute this value so 753.98 mm square per meter so for the horizontal bar also you can provide 12 mm bar at 150 mm center to center as the required rebar is 750 mm square per meter so in case if the boundary element check that is the stress was greater than the stress limit then we have to go for the boundary element design and that is done with the simplified tnc pier section so that i'll show you in the next video of the shear wall design so if this video helped you do like and comment in the video and subscribe our channel and share with your friends thank you